So it's been a while, but we're back on the Mick and Joe vlog. And you're joining us today at Southfield Reservoir. But you need to close your eyes and not see that because I'm betraying the feeder fraternity. Because that is a method feed, I've just had that on. But I couldn't help myself, I've fancied a go on it for ages. And we wanted to um, sit down and have a chat with you guys. And me and Joe are going to catch up with what we've been up to, catching loads of fish on this cracking venue so welcome back to the vlog we got here mate skin bob i was just thinking that we caught by any means necessary is that well we've caught him on the old trap um even there even a small fish likes a little after though i was just thinking to myself that got to have a look at what you've got on here oh no no don't uh... i'm not supposed to be doing this it's cheating it's not though is it um, I feel like I'm cheating. Yeah, you do. I do. I feel like I'm being. Bet I'm a betrayal. <laughs> of the, I feel like Judas. Of the sacred code of bee yeah. fishing. Yeah, yeah. That is a lovely little one of them. Look. Alright. Micro bandum wafter in brightest pink you can. On attached to a B983. Best look in the 14. world. Fourteen. Fantastic. Best kept secret in the world. That one is. And I'm just, and a, and um, a, uh, yeah, a what? Uh, yeah, 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 don't. Is that a banjo feed you've got on there? I, don't tell anybody. At Southfield? No, no, don't tell them where we are. I just pretend we're on a random place. It's, uh, yeah, I feel, it's sacrilege, really. It's it's like blaspheming uh, doing this. Um, I'll tell you what, though, it's working, isn't it? <laughs> have you, had, not, have you this... had a cast without one yet? <laughs> no, no, I've had a, I've had a, uh, a skimmer. So or a big skip, man. Like Lovely, isn't it, that? I'm just getting to, just get to palm. Madam so Palm. Yeah, you can lob it out there, look. And, um, yeah, because I'll tell you what you can do with this. You can chuck it out, like that. And leave it. And just leave it. Put it in rest. Have a cup of tea. Tell you what it is, pleasure angling. Mm. Pleasure fishing. Well, I'm pleasure angling, aren't I? Look, the ultimate pleasure angling style today. You're, you're sat on your rooster box. With a waggler. Yeah. And my favourite rod in the whole wide world. I am, even though it's not a race, I am going to set me. You're still thinking about the job, aren't you? You can't help it, can you? <clears throat> I've gone for the simplest approach. I've got some ground bait and some pellets. I've mixed them together in my little bowl here. Hold on. And um, just damp enough to well, screw It's nice, that. What, what we got in there? So, they're uh, thin perfect feed, two mil. Tina. And this is um, the marine match method marine. So no. Is this your new? Is this uh, your first time with that ground bait? Because I've never used this one before. It is, and I've what they call. I've just had to dampen these off a bit because it's quite nice though. I was, it's fine. It's it's fine, and it's working. And it's smelly, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite strong. It's a nice colour. Pot of wafters. Not too bright, but not. Not dark, yeah, you can smell the fish in it. Which John is, Kelly, which is good. Be, if he watches this, he'll be loving it, won't he? Like, go on, mate, show yeah. him how it's done on the yeah. method at well, Southfield. It's, uh, <laughs> do you know something? I didn't think we'd catch on it because it's absolutely freezing. It um, wind's horrible, isn't it? It's warmer than it were yesterday, um, and winds, the wind's gone this way a bit, and wind's a bit less than what it forecasts. I didn't think we'd actually be able to fish at all, or at least film, because I thought it'd be too windy to talk and stuff, but it's... Um, not too well, bad. we're sat on his own, really, aren't we? So we should be catching. I've just had a fry, I'm just trying to yeah, eat the Yeah, there is a, a million little baby roach and stuff about, isn't there? Yeah, I just threw some ground bait in edge. I don't know if you'll be able to get it, but... Um, yeah. There's not a fish there at the minute, but I threw some in a moment ago, and 500 <laughs> fry came on in it. Oh, there they are, look. Yeah, they're on it. Look at them. Blimey, neck. There's tons of them. They're not tiny then, are they? No, no, well they must have been this oh, early season early this season. year. Um, places lifting with small fish, roach, small skimmers. Um, but we seem to be selecting a few bigger ones, which is what this kind of method does. Um, you go straight around? Yeah, that's, no. yeah, one minute, 59 seconds. No, he's gone, oh, he's come off, he's come off, Joe. That's I, because... I just said I'd best looking in world and all. Yeah, that's, i tell you why, because that weren't on, I reckon that were a... Because it were like that. Like a line back, oh, probably gone over its okay. back. Pathetic, that way. Hey, look. Had me... your bandits had your wafter. Yeah, that's surely that weren't in mouth, would it? 
So yeah, it's um, we're having a day, a different day for Southfield standards, aren't we? Yeah. I'm waggling and you're. Yeah, I'm. I'm cheating. Playing away. Playing away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been looking behind me in case anybody comes. Look at that one. Uh, in case anybody comes and sees me. It's the only reason you get through a pot of wafters because you either drop them or. Yeah, or, or a far look of flicks one off you. Off. Yeah. Not easy with grip big hands like mine, but just Managing easy, it. easy man. Yeah, easy man. But um, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of pleasure anglers will come here who will fish like this. It's funny that it's us that fishes our style when we come, because there's a couple of pleasure anglers further down the lake, and one's pole fishing. And, yeah. Um, but it's a fantastic fishery that's got a f massive following really really big match circuit here um, but I think it's a place that people come to fish however they want traditional is that yeah is I that, think traditional is the right yeah, way traditional feeder fishing which is worms and cage feeders and that sort of thing because they like to catch a few bream um, and it's it, comfy isn't it hey park your van there right? Yeah, but we've um, we've actually come, not really come to fish, have we? We came to film some bits and bobs for the up and coming New Fish Feeder King final, which is on the 21st. And, and, and we thought it'd be rude not to wet a line, didn't we? Yeah, well, we've been down bank and got trophy out and put the banner up and um, got everything ready because we need to let people know what's happening. Um, and while you're here, why wouldn't you just throw your tackling? Which is why I've gone for this simple but different approach. Because mm. um, I think if you came here... I was going to fish a pole. Yeah, but, but if the wind... We was, that, yeah, we yeah. heard that the wind was going to be savvy, so I thought, do you know what, I'll fish a waggler. And, and it's lovely, to be honest. Yeah, well, it, I were here yesterday um, on a match, although you wouldn't have noticed that if you looked at the results, because despite me getting 40 quid off Mick Axon for a double default section win, very much it's only a five peg section, so that doesn't mean that I didn't really beat many people, <laughs> did I? Um, and Trev Parkin, local superstar, um, he actually won the match from that pig there and he fished a, fished a brilliant match he did. Sure. Yeah, uh, 19 pound odd. Um, they were 10 pound odd off MPEG 20, that were Lee Kerry, and then they were 11 pound off the other MPEG. I think they were about 30 of us or 25 of us or something like that. So two in pegs were second and third. But Trev here... Um, really well. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, but it's been, it's been fishing brilliant all, all year. It always goes a bit iffy in summer, I think, when the fish go back into the canal, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's got their opinion on what happens with fishing here. But early spring, I think they come into spawn. Then I think all the fish disappear. You get... All the small skimmers, um, I just had one about 10 hours, so we're not catching the tiny ones on this because this is a bit more selective. But, um, like, yes, you can you catch loads of these tiny, tiny skimmers, and I think you've had a few small ones, aren't you? Quite a lot, yeah. Um, nice to see. And the place fills up with them in summer, but then as they disappear out of there, I think because it's shallow, they go back into the canal where it's a little bit deeper. You don't like it's cold, all you get left with is some big resident bream and, um, and it fishes well even throughout winter it's hard don't get me wrong but it's it's, it's catch here though isn't it yeah there's that you're, you're always facing fish without a doubt and somebody always catches a few but so yeah tell you what was in caught me eye mate while we've been here there's all this palaver going on down here yeah they've uh, set up camp haven't they so there's a bodyguard to get you in on the gate they've got okay. a security yeah um but now we've got all these port cabins mm. and diggers and well, I were here a couple of weeks ago and spoke to... So, see, that's, uh, that's, for anyone who doesn't know, that's the Aaron Calder Canal. Yeah, that's where and we then, filmed... Yeah, we filmed just down there, didn't we? Hmm. As the crow flies, and then the new junction, go, oh, new junction goes up there. Yeah. Aaron Calder carries on up there. Yeah. yeah you so can it's just a major about, shipping route, this is from, really... From here, you can just about see the junction, no junction, canal junction, mm -hmm. where that tees off. Yeah. Um, it's opposite the sort of that open mountain, and entry level uh, <clears throat> area, sorry, for... The big lake, the other lake, because this is the small lake, despite being absolutely massive. This is the smaller, it's about a third. It, this is a third, of, and that's two thirds of the old Southfield Reservoir system. But it's, um, 
Yeah, they're they're doing some renovation work on the tins, or if that's the right word. Uh, so the metal pilings, when they had that breach, of, what would it be? Two or three years ago, probably. Something like that. Yeah. Apparently, the canal um, obviously was, was drained or it were down uh, to stop it running over, and that took the pressure off the tins. I bumped into a canal and river trust guy now who got a pen and a clipboard, he looked really important, hard at. Um, his hands were clean, his nails were clean. So well, he Adam really, Dowder, it. He weren't really busy. No, he, he were busier than Adam. Um, and, it, and I said to him, what's cracking? He went, apparently, when the water went down, the water pressure that holds oh. the tins back meant that the tins come forward. And I think they also told me banks dry out behind it because there's not that indication then. Um, you know, when I see that and it just flicks back, I always think, that's had it in its mouth and it's probably just... Spat it or... Not yeah, or, it. yeah, it's not hooked it properly and it... You, it could be a liner, but it, that's what I always think. I always think, is that had in its mouth? Have I been, have I been seen off? Um, but it'll pull round. So we're having some canal restoration work, which I actually thought would be really noisy, but it hasn't been. No, they're well behaved, but they you know... Does anybody work that noisily these days? They don't really do a lot, do they? I think they've had a tea break since nine o'clock. Um, it's banging and clapping. probably just getting sailed to be fair yeah. to them. Yeah, so this, it, the interesting thing about this, and I said, so are you doing it here? No, no, the work's going off right up the canal, but this is the closest point they can get with the... Oh, really? They're yeah. not actually doing the work here? No, no, the work's not here, but they're oh. using a working barge that's coming up and down the canal, going yeah. back to the where the work is, because it's in several spots. And this morning when I got here, they were loading a load of old... Uh, pilot steel pilings onto the back of a scrap truck so it's purely here because of the access they've got yeah, to M18 right. or M62 That'll which is not quite there. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're not doing it but it's not affected the fishing. Oh, the fishing um, being great. Yeah, just out of interest me because I've just spotted some of it. I know you're not using braid on your reel which obviously here you would generally use braid I would, I would imagine. Yeah, if I were um, fishing in conventional, let's call it conventional, traditional, whatever you want to call it, i.e. Uh, a tail, you know, whether that be a metre right down to a foot, um, you basically want to see your bites and I think they up your bite, you know, you get hooked up a little bit easier. Mm. Um, but we're method, I don't think... It's not as important. No, it? because what will happen is it'll pick it up. Every single fish I've had has been, the hook has been right in the middle of the bottom lip. Unlike that one that's just come off, obviously. <laughs> Um, and it's almost the job's done. By the time you see your tip move, the whole operation's finished. Mm. You're not striking or anything? No, it's picked it up, and every single one I've had is just, and it's like that, and they're on. Because it's, the, the work's done by the weight of the method and the air, the fact that it's an air, whereas I think sometimes with a, you've got like worms on and uh, you've got bait over your hook, I sometimes think you need a bit more force in your tip for that to work, or you sometimes pick up and set the hook. You've not quite got that same thing going off. Now, if it were really deep and really windy and I were chucking a long way, I might consider using braid on a method, Ooh. so I've got better control. Way. And that one nearly put rod in. Lovely. And, that, and that's, that was a good time, wasn't it? Perfect. Do you know um, that was perfect time? So you got detection on, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I've just got five pound on. Got straight because, through. Yeah, straight through, because it tows, there's a lot of tow here. So, you know, if I were fishing a method and I were chucking it a long way or they were not a carp, I'd probably use six pound. But because I want it to be as thin as, you could probably go away with four pound really, but um, I want it to be as thin as possible to cut through the tow so that my tip's not like that. It, it won't make any difference because you've just seen, well, you didn't see it, but it nearly right put my rod in. Um, oh, he's, oh, look at him. Where you were reeling that in then, I thought it was a little swimmer. Well, I've gone on top of him, and the beauty about having this line on is that there is a little bit of absorption in it, even though it's a low stretch. I thought he's a cracker. And he takes this thing out of it. But I've also, I've just a look at that rod. Yeah, you've got a soft rod on you. Yeah, yeah, there's no need. I'm not casting very fast. Jeez. 35 <laughs> metres, good strong handle, that, isn't it? Um, it's bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. You made it look easy, Joe. You made it look very easy. Bottom lip. Yeah. Perfect. There it is, look. It's actually not middle, that one, but it's on the bottom lip. Yeah, I'm Which, good. every single one has been in, 
in the bottom lip and you find that it's a it's the way they feed I think um, well, that's great and you get a common a common thing but yeah it's quite effective <laughs> they obviously like uh, they like it don't they well you've had a tow in every single cast in haven't you? yeah been incredible sit and wait and get towing considering that this morning was three three degrees um when i loaded my van sorry that's a lie actually where i live it was six went down to the warehouse to pick up the banners and stuff and the trophies to come filming with you i think we're early look at that look lovely man great isn't it to see people coming on natural venues and well on a, on a thursday when it's cold and it forecast it to be cool and like they all know each other, all waving at each other. Look. Yeah, it's Thursday Club, I reckon. Thursday Club. Um, oh, I'm going to get on back of my wagon. I I'm can't fault you. But it's warmed up enough for us to fish join it. Oh, aye. Basically. But, yeah, great stuff. Right, in stark contrast to our mixed fishing, I've gone back to my roots almost, and I'm just going to set up in a nice pleasure angler style, and I'm just going to fish the waggler. Now, I've set up my absolute pride and joy. I absolutely love this rod. It's a Normark Titan 2000 and I actually got it left from a family friend who unfortunately lost his battle with cancer. He left me this rod and, it, and to be honest it was in a right tatty old state. But uh, Bob the rod lovingly rebuilt it for me. Uh, it redid all the whippings and uh, revarnished it and whatnot and it is just a thing of beauty. Still looks a bit tired because obviously Stuart used it loads and loads because it was back then it wasn't pole fishing it was all rod and line fishing on the river. And uh, so it got well used this rod but and I've used it loads since as well. So every time I get to use this, I enjoy it because it's obviously got a lot of memories and uh, and it's a beautiful rod as well. But what I've done, I've just set up a nice big waggler actually. It's quite windy. And I've gone for a four and a half gram like insert waggler. Just fix that in position with some float stops, nice and simple. And then down the line, I've just got a bit of a spread of number eights. I can either bulk them down or uh, like stagger them or even spread them out a bit further. Fairly long hook length and I'm fishing it at about 18 inches over depth. Now, it's quite windy and the wind's sort of going from right to left and then I've got a bit of tow that's obviously bouncing off this bottom bank and sending it back that way. Now to find a nice little way of keeping my rig nice and stable, I've set up about 18 inches over depth. I wouldn't hesitate to go even more over depth. If it's absolutely ramming through and I can't control my float, I'll just keep putting line on the bottom. I'm more than happy to do that. It's a little bit different to when you pole fishing. You know, you're trying to present a bait at distance and you need to be able to keep it static. So don't be frightened to put plenty of line on the bottom. Uh, in a similar old school fashion, I've balled it in and I just chucked in six or seven balls full of casters, full of emp. And then I'm fishing either like a worm's head or a double maggot over the top. And we've been catching a fish pretty much every chuck in. Granted, most of them are small, little roach, little skimmers, but I'm having a great time. You know, it's lovely just to fish a waggler, isn't it, for a change when we're all pole mad these days. And uh, yeah, I always take the opportunity to get a bend in this beautiful rod. We're vlogging again. I'm, uh, let, me, let me get my brew on. You got a brew on as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's that kind of day, isn't it? It is that kind of day. And it's this kind of way to fish, isn't it? I've got my rest of box, look. I'm, I, I'm the most comfortable man in Doncaster today, I reckon. You're armchairing it, aren't you? Or the region of Doncaster, should I say. Yeah, I think this is classed as Doncaster. It's yeah, enough. I'd class it as Doncaster. Close enough for me, isn't it? You know what, the, them internet, people on the internet are ruthless when it comes to places. Ah, facts and figures. Facts and that. Been a victim of that one before. Yeah. So here's a question for them. Are we closer to Gaul or are we closer to Doncaster? And I wouldn't like to call that, but I've got a funny feeling we're closer to goal, but... By water, definitely goal. Good point. Yeah. Good point. So, Mick, what have you been up to? Back from everything. Obviously, the big news. We've been, we've been busy, haven't we? we? We've, got to, we've got to go straight into the big news, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, you retired? Yeah, well, it's funny, that. One of the said, have you retired? And I said... No, no, I've just, I'm just having a change. Um, so obviously I've stepped away from the Drennan England feeder team. Um, that's been amazing. That's been, what, 13 years, I think. Um, been on 13 campaigns. Uh, this year, last one in, in Spain, um, which were a, an interesting um, place. That's 
in Merida. That's full of fish, that is. We went on the Merida Masters early on in the year. There's a bit of a, uh, a look at it. Fishing was unbelievable. It's probably some of the best natural fishing I've ever seen. Um, even though when you look at nets of fish, it looks like you've been on a commercial. Yeah, I've never seen fishing like that. <laughs> no, Carassios. I think I had 50, 52 kilos on last day of that three day and didn't do very well. There were, everybody had 50 kilos. There were, I think 40, 45 kilos were last in section. Incredible. Um, one guy had a 70 kilos, but then everybody else had f between 40 and 55 kilos, crackers. Amazing place. Um, so yeah, that's that's been an exciting roller coaster ride of all sorts of ups and downs, more ups and downs. And um, yeah, we're just gonna concentrate on what we're doing now. Obviously. Well, you've had a great career, haven't you? Fundamentally, it's, it's unbelievable. But, you know, um, you've had some amazing times, haven't you? Great, you've got done your country proud, I'd say. I've got a rack full of medals. Um, my team goals are sort of my pride and joy, really. Picked up a few individual accolades along the way. You know, put them just behind your team goals, they're lovely. And um, enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. But, you know, all good things come to a bit of an end. So I've um, hung up my cap, as it were. But there's plenty of people, obviously, coming through that can get involved in that. And I think England will do really well going forward. They've got, I think, the best team of anglers. Um, brilliant lads who can all fish like hell. And uh, they'll, they'll go forward and onwards and upwards. And But we've still got plenty of things to do domestically, haven't we? You oh, know, have we? Um, there's loads and loads of comps going off. We've got a couple of big comps coming up. Feeder King final, which will be on, on here. Don't think I'll get away with fishing a method on that. <laughs> um, it's not allowed. And then there's Feeder Masters the week after, which is really looking forward to that one. That's the first Bait Tech Feeder Masters final we've had. New sponsor this year. Um, we've already yeah, had a Super League with them. Massive support from the sponsors there. You know, um, Andrew Cook, who's Managing Director of Bait Tech has looked at what we've done over the years and he's supporting us now, so we're, we're, we're you know, it's great. But there's tons of tons of good competitions going off, isn't there? I think Riverfest finals next weekend and we were just saying, weren't we, how many matches there is these days? It's good unbelievable, matches. isn't it? It's um, for everyone now, isn't it? Yeah, there's UK Champs is on this week. The Cause three-day festival on Upper Trent's on. I think the Newark... Uh, match that John Urity runs. That's a festival on this week. This week, did you say there's an over 50s festival at Tunnel Barn? Yeah, Tunnel Barn. I mean, if you want to go match fishing these days, I think there's never been a better time, hasn't it? Well, your oyster, pick and choose where you want to be. It's um, it's brilliant, but it's not all about match fishing, Joe, is it? Because you thought my nose were big. What about your nose? What did you catch other night? Tell oh. me about that. Yeah, that was uh that was something good. So I've been, uh, obviously everyone, well, a lot of people know that I spend a lot of my winter fishing for big specimen chub. And uh, I also trying to catch a barbel. The great ooze that I fish used to be famous. In fact, it, you know, it held the record for years and years, up until very recently, British record. But when the otters came, obviously that generation of big fish, you know, just died out and, uh, so they're few and far between. Some would say unicorns, but rocking horse poo is easier to find than a <laughs> great who's barber. Race horse eggs. <laughs> and, um, but I'd heard a whispering and an inkling. A few of my friends had sort of told me that there was some really nice fish in this particular bit of river. A new bit of river for me, actually. And uh, I, had a, I had a go in, over the winter and I never caught any. I just really struggled. But I thought, you know what? I'm, in my downtime, I'm going to make sure I put a proper effort in to try and catch one of these barbel. And um, just to put it in perspective, how few there are, it's a, this stretch, you know, it's several miles long. We reckon there's 15 or less known barbel, maximum 15. So it's not many fish. And uh, yeah, I put a big effort in this over this summer 
and it's been a slog. You know, I've caught some nice chub, don't get me wrong, but no sign of a barbel. And then, but finally this week, I got me, got me, me moment. Yeah, it was a... Uh, Go on, what did, he, what did he weigh? 14 pound 15, which... Oh, we're, oh, we're on the scales and give you 14, well, did you just round it up to 15? Well, I actually said it was 14, 14, but he said no, it was 14, 15. Oh, well. Um, yeah, Fair harsh play. scalesman, but it, it were actually 15, one for ages, and it dropped, I'm like, no, I can't say it's 15 if it's not. And uh, yeah, and it's actually, <laughs> amazingly, the first one that I caught is actually the biggest fish in the stretch, um, which is just, that's how lucky I am. And um, a bit down in weight, obviously we've had spawning time and all that, but yeah, just the... Uh, when, when, are the bar, when are they at the peak then of weight? Is that in springtime? Yeah, they're, so they're, they're probably at the peak just before spawning because they're full of eggs and full of food and... Yeah. But as anglers, you know, February, March time is synonymous with big river fish, big fish in general, but... So to catch one in the summer, a bit down in weight, but it's just, when you see one, Mick, we measured it, it was 82 centimetres. I mean, they're just colossal, you know what I mean? They're massive. Yeah. And this fish could be 25 years old. Did, like, it, did it pull? Oh, God. The bite was like nothing you've ever... <laughs> never Because it's only a small bit of river and, uh, yeah, it just... But, I, you know, I'd, I was geared up. I had 15-pound line on and... Brilliant. Um, big hooks and that. And, yeah, just a... Fish of a lifetime, Mick, really. You know, I could never catch another one again and I'd be more than happy. Well, I think you've, you've completed it. I think that's the saying these, these days. These I've days, completed yeah. it. Yeah, it's... Um, it's it, nice because obviously I had a seven pound chub back end of the season. Um, got that massive barbel. Kind of feel like all I need now is a big perch. And that's kind of... Oh, I'm I'm here in perch. That's obviously the next yeah. the next target. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I'll just stick to catching these. You just catch them big bream. A nice bream on that method. That's another cracker, isn't it? Yeah, there's some big fish. I think it's naturally selective this method. Yeah, very much. So. Um, without a doubt. It's funny. I had my um, PB match fish this year, which I'd kind of forgot about really, but because it just happened during a, a competition, we were on. Oh, is that uh, the Super League? Very interesting venue, yeah. Um, St Albans. Uh, I keep calling it Willers Lakes, but it's actually called Albans Lakes. That's what it's called, at St Albans. Not St Albans Lakes. It's Albans Lakes at St Albans, which is down in Hertfordshire. Yeah. I think... Almost in big smoke there, aren't you? Yeah, closer to London than what, you, what I realised anyway. But um, that's some old, like an old gravel pit and... Really mature, beautiful surroundings, trees and loads of willow trees, and it's full of all sorts of surprises. Catfish, um, they reckon there's some massive catfish in it, but I had a 22-4 uh, carp. I didn't get a photograph of it because we were in a match and we, you weigh them really quickly. Oh, you got and, to put them and, back. And put them back, yeah, so you shout foot scales. Because obviously you don't want to put in a... 22-4 carp in your key net, do you? And um, that were a beauty. So I didn't really get time to enjoy it as much as what I'd like to have done, but what a fantastic What fish. did it weigh? 22-4. Amazing. Which I know is not big by carp standards. No, it is though, isn't it? You're just fishing on, on match gear with 14 and caught it on a, uh, on a method. It pulled a bit, I can tell you. That That's a great place. If anybody lives near there, and they can get on there. Do you know what? We uh, need next summer. We need to have a trip there. I think. Oh, that's a good idea. We'll put that in diary. I'd love to have a go at that. There's um, there's massive head of bream. I think on the first day I had fifty pound of bream, and which you just kind of oh, it's a bream, it's a bream, and they add up. Some of them are five, six pound, and um, it's full of skimmers. But that were a great event. That were um, the bait tech. Freedom Master Super League, which our friends at Newfish North finished up winning that. Yeah, um, what what a, what a result for those guys? Oh no, they've uh, they've worked hard and they've obviously got a new lad in, Jake uh, Jake Dials, done and proud, and there were Wayne, Bartholomew, Steve Whitfield, and uh, Rich Wilson, and Jake Dye, and they, to be fair to them. They had a good steady performance on day one, and then on day two, 
they actually drew our peg from the day one. We won the first day, and they won the second day, but they... Look how that grave's just come off in my peg. Ah, it's typical. They, um, they just had a couple of points less than us. It was really tight. I think day one, we were leading, and when we did the results back at our digs, obviously me and Lee running the competition, I think there were only seven points between the top six. Yeah. Which meant that anybody could win it. And you sat there in front and you think, well, no, they've got to catch you up. But it it was just an incredible venue where anything could happen. And, and it did, because somebody would catch a catfish at £20 or a carp at £20. And that would take them from bottom of the section to the top of the section. And, and we've not had a venue like that before. It's usually been more of a, you know, lots of small fish. Um, roach and skimmers and that sort of thing we've had. Staunton Arrow, we've had Rudyard. But that was somewhere completely different and um, it was really enjoyable. I must admit, as a spectator looking from the outside in, because obviously I was only at home watching it through Facebook, Yeah. it looked like so exciting because big fish, it was a leveller, wasn't it? Because. Absolutely. You know, like ringers had anglers in poor areas, you had anglers in poor areas. Yep. Yeah. And other, other teams. You know, came like graphite team who have done really well recently. You know, did well again, didn't they? And no, no, brilliant. They were they actually tied with us on points to beat us um, on sector on weight, I think, uh, over the over the two days. And it were all nip and talking up and down, and that was just a fantastic final. And I can't wait for that to all happen again. It were uh, it were brilliant. But fishing's been great this year. You know, we've. We've had uh, National Canal feed and National. Um, that didn't really work out for us. That were Barnsley because that were really patchy. But actually, Aquastim Southfield, which is what they call it, some some lads who come here, they put a team in, headed by Alan Gregory, who's been catching loads of fish everywhere he sits down at the minute. I think he actually won on Don last week. Did he? And he's been, yeah, and he won on Canal after they won National. They won that. That were brilliant. Fair play to them. Um, and then Barnsley had the Leeds Liverpool Canal for Division 1. I didn't get involved in that because I didn't want to start tying rigs and putting number two as elastic to my pole, but um, <laughs> not my bag shallow canals and Sharon narrow canals anyway. I don't mind a big deep Yorkshire canal or a Gloucester canal, but can't really get my head around small, small venues. I think I'm a bit too industrial for that kind of thing, but yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been an interesting year, but we've also been busy doing lots of films too, haven't we? We've had a great time with that. Lots of filming, lots of work. Yeah. Lots of products. Well, you've been causing a lot of work by telling everybody how to fish paste. Because that's been a mega um, sort of... Yeah, that's been a success story, hasn't it? <laughs> su summer for that, yeah. you've um, So we launched, obviously, the big top raids, but including that was the floats that we've, you know, Joe's designs. And they've been brilliant. We've not been able to keep up with that, and that's kept everybody back at headquarters really busy, which has been um, fantastic. Like the, the pace seat thing seems to have been really popular, but we walked around uh, the Subscriber Classic match, which is run by our friends at Match Fishing Magazine. Yep. And, um, you know, everyone's fishing close in, aren't they? And I think that paste, obviously, is perfect for anglers who just want to fish close in, isn't it? And yeah, I think... Catch big um, fish. I mean, obviously, my experience of commercials is quite limited. I've not really got involved in them um, over the years, unlike people like yourself. And when I do go, go and, you know, look at how people fish and the fact that there's a lot of fish in the margins, not everybody wants to sit with a 60 metre pole. Nice. They're pinging, flapping and tapping and doing all them things, but there's plenty of fish to be caught short, and I think you, you've hit nail on the head, and I didn't quite twig why pace fishing was so popular, but it lends itself to those fisheries, doesn't it? And now you've showed everybody how to do it. You don't, it's one of those methods where you don't need the best pole. No. You don't need the best tackle. It's, no. You do it around your feet, you catch loads of fish and you can compete with the young young guns who are fishing shallow, it's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no, um, it's not discriminative, is it? Short pace fishing. No, it's not. <laughs> you don't have to be an Iron Man or 21 years old or a, one of these, as you said, what do we call young guns? You don't have to do it. A bit like this feeder fishing, it's uh, nice for a steady day. So what are you going to, uh, are you going to fish for a big perch then, Joe, next? Is that what you're going to do? 
Oh, it's having an accident. <laughs> no, having I've, an I've, I've heard it there, and, and it's funny, I bumped into your mate Adam Richards this morning in Wickers Angling Centre. We were on his way down to Barston for UK Champs, and I saw him meet and join a bit, and he, we got talking about your barbel. And he, and he said exactly what I'd said to you. What are you going to do now? You've got that. And he went, he'll probably go and fish for a big perch. And then you've mentioned it. So I'm, I'm it's hearing noises it's here. It's in my mind. The thing is, that I think I mentioned this to you before. And people mentioned it to me. Uh, when I get something in my head like that, I just like to do it. Yeah. And uh, the users, again, there are big perch to catch. And I mean big perch, five pounders. Now, I'm not saying that that's a realistic target because that was a few years ago, but I think a four pounder is uh, realistic. What, in, in that venue? Yeah. Brilliant. I tell you where there's a load of big perch in this canal behind us. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's a bit of fish. I'm going to swing him, mate. Ooh, is that an hybrid? That's a little hybrid, that is. Yeah. Lovely fish. Yeah, this canal here, that's got loads of big perch in it. I fished in a match recently. Now we're catching like sort of one and two ounce roach in between skimmers, fishing a short line with pinkies. It were a brilliant, um, brilliant day, and I caught I don't know twelve pound of bits and bobs and skimmers and stuff. And I actually had three. My first one with a perch, it rattle tip, and I'm winding it back, and it and it like sort of jagged. And I thought, well, all right, then it got stuck. Anyway, a bit later on, I'm winding a roach back in, boom. And then it, I'm like, oops, something. It, it's come off and I thought, what's happening there? And I swung this roach in and all its scales were, were, were missing. Not No teeth marks, just scales missing. Scales. And I believe that's what happens when a perch mouths them. Um, and that happened three times. So I don't know how big they are in there, but if they're gobbing two ounces... I've heard, I've heard five pounders get caught in a new junction. Fantastic fish, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, funny enough, I caught a four pound perch on Will Raisin's kit once. We were filming on the... Uh, Basin Stoke Canal, trying to catch these big perch that he'd heard about, and he caught a few up to like two pounds. He's like, Do you want to have a go? I'm like, Of course I do. Don't need asking twice. Anyway, I'm first chuck out with a lobworm on. It's gone under. I've hit this perch, it's come straight to the top, and Will's actually ran down, it was that big. Will's ran down the canal with a landing net and scooped it up there and then, to rather sure. than risk yeah. shipping it back. And this, honestly, Mick, it was just gigantic. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a four pounder. Three, seen a three pounder. Um, I always think even a you know a three pound is a special fish, and it's massive. Well, uh, think about a three pound bream, and I know that perch are sort of thicker set, but it's not a small fish, is it? You know, not physically small fish, regardless of what it weighs. No, and I think a four pound river perch is like it's going to be good, that, isn't it? Oh yeah. But well, if we get another good... river like uh, another winter like last winter with all the rain, probably not possible. So plate by ear on that one. Yeah, because it has a massive impact, doesn't it? And there's, there's obviously more barbel to try and catch. I haven't finished with that yet. Well, you're going to have another one? Oh, yeah. So exciting, isn't it? <laughs> You'll probably catch one while you're chub fishing this winter. Yeah, I'm amazed you... I haven't before, to be honest. You Although, like you... I say, it is a different bit of river oh. to what I've been fishing, you know, so... Yeah. I've not really been on river. I mean, when I call it river, I talk about the trend, but... Um, not really had the matches have not been on there this year, but yet year before year before that we were never off it, and it was and it was funny. I've kind of missed it a little bit, and hopefully I'll get back on it soon. But um, I think that's you know you talk about it's a different river. That's been an interesting year for for the trend. They had all the massive floods in winter, and this talk that it's changed changed the venue, hasn't it? Yep, yeah, there's a, there's a lot less days. Uh, a lot less small fish. Big fish are still there. I mean, we went and filmed a video at, on Tidal, didn't we? At, yeah. Um, Collingham. Oh, that's right, Collingham. That's what it was. I couldn't think of it for, for a minute then. And um, we caught plenty of barbel that day, didn't we? And we caught a couple of chub as well, didn't we? Yeah, that was great. That was like a right day to remember, wasn't it? Yeah, it's funny. You forget all these things as you, you're just rattling them out throughout the year, but... It's quite Brilliant. funny, really, isn't it? Because obviously I'm known for like my commercial fishing and stuff, and you get the comments that you on Facebook like, "Do some proper fishing." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like literally there every night trying to catch these bass. Yeah, I think that's your that's your um, 
alter ego, is it? That's yeah, what my little say. secret. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Joe's sneaking about with an head torch on. Yeah. <laughs> You are getting by about every chuck. On this? Yeah. Every single chuck in? Yeah, it's in your striking. The, the, it's funny, the, I've, the I've head not... of small fish in this lake must be incredible. Because I, I, I mean, if you were fishing a pole, it'd be unbelievable, wouldn't it? And what's the toe doing? Because my tip doesn't look as... It's pretty um, pretty calm, to be honest. It's, I've got a bit of line on, but it's just sitting there lovely. Yeah, because I... It was certainly better when it was towing a bit more earlier uh, on this. I'd like to come back without one, Joe. Have you seen that? It's the first one today, isn't it? Yeah, that's... Oh, apart from when I lost that one. Carrying on like that ain't going to win you another feeder, King, is it? Coming back without a feeder. No, you've got, to keep, you've got to come back with one every chuck. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Come back with one every chuck. Slightly unrealistic, but... Lee Carey does, doesn't he? Yeah. It's, it seems to do when it matters. It seems to, yeah. It's got a bit quiet here, Mick. I wonder if there's a bigger fish around. It shows their sign, isn't it? And because mm. uh, there's been millions of roach and little skimmers in here all summer, and when you chuck in and it don't, you don't get your tip rattled or your float's not flying under. It usually means that there's an odd better fish lurking. Tell you what, so, so relaxing this kind of fish, isn't it? <laughs> I, can't can't I mean, look at me, I've even got, I can even swing this round up and really relax. Yeah, I should have bought, I should. I think I should have one of them. I don't know why anyone wouldn't want to use one of these, in fact, look, I mean, even warm my hands up. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh. Isn't it nice fishing a waggler, mate? We don't do it enough, do we? It's the most pleasurable method of fishing, I think. It's not physically hard work, is it like a pole? But you still get to watch a float going under. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? Like getting, trying to get your presentation. And... I always think that, that the art of waggler fishing, sort of that type of waggler fishing, don't mean pellet waggler fishing. What, sitting with your hands in your pockets? It's um, it's it's kind of lost, isn't it? Because once upon a time, there were no other option. Because um, I think float fishing were more popular, sorry, it was the method before ledgering, yep. as it were called. Um, and I think that's where all the skill came from. Some of these, you know, really old fashion articles that you read and books that you read about. Billy Lane and Ivan Marks and all them people that they've got all these different types of floats, different shapes of floats, big floats, you know, sensitive but big, so that they could actually present a bit at distance. Yeah. I mean, what you're fishing there, sort of six, 18, 19 metres? Yeah, like when I was throwing my balls of ground bait and it was like at the limit to where I could throw them, really. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's probably. Just past pole line, I'd say, like 18, 19 18 metres ish. Yeah. I was, I was thinking there's some wonderful waggler anglers now, like the modern era, but no one really learns how to fish it on the bottom anymore, do they? <laughs> no, no, because well, we've got carp, haven't we? And the so, what are they so uh, accommodating, aren't they, carp? You know, you can catch them, can't you? Catch them shallow. You know, you, yes. you'd, you'd rarely fish on the bottom with, for carp with a waggler, wouldn't you? You'd no, fish no. A pellet waggler or. No, no. You fish, you fish either with a bombing pellet or a method, or you'd fish on a pole on deck, wouldn't you? That's what you do. Because it's all more accurate. That's the thing about pole fishing, isn't it? It's more, more accurate, more refined. You know, you hit more bites. Oh, I don't you, doubt. If I'd have fished a pole here today, I'd have had a bigger weight. But for pure enjoyment, this is great, isn't it? Not as pleasurable. And obviously, like learning about back from my youth like not being frightened to put line on the bottom and stuff like people probably look at it alien nowadays yeah it is it's a lost art and why wouldn't you have i mean you took a feeder out and you might have a 50 centimeter or you know two foot three foot four foot tail up to a meter we could do a metric and imperially can't we <laughs> um and then why wouldn't you have that same amount of line up bottom with a waggler 
And of course, people think and worry about the bike, not seeing the bikes, but it's different, isn't it? When your floats, you know, bobbing through and towing through, it's almost like pulling the hook bait along, keeping it tight, isn't it? It's different. Yeah, you're more likely to see a bite on a, with 50 centimetres of line on the bottom on a float than you are with 50 centimetres of line on a feeder, wouldn't you? Because I've got to actually pick it up yeah. and swim away. Because it's not, it's not necessarily tight, is it? Really interesting. I've made like some little plummets, Mick, out of SSGs and I've put a, band, a bait band in them and yeah. pinched some pliers around. They're ever so good because you can obviously nick them on, cast them out and... What, you've, so up, you've just up, up the band? Up the band and yeah. try and get as accurate as you can. Mark the rod with, you know, a little kit marker and then add some, de add some depth on it. And of course that makes, it's easier to cast that shot than it is to cast a plummet. Yeah, because it, yeah. it can be hard, can't it, to cast a plummet out. Oh, that's a little, look at that thing. But you can see the bites of fish like that. Yeah. Even on a waggler. So here's a question then, and me and you have talked about this before, and I'm sure everybody watching will have an opinion on this. We have these really sensitive pole float tips. Well, we don't, because we sell big tops, but... Um, <laughs> People get obsessed, don't they, with the diameter and sensitivity of pole floats. But yet, that waggler that you've got there is as thick as... What do you reckon, 4mm tip? It's got to be, hasn't it? But yet, away it goes. So, why do you see all these bites on a waggler that apparently you need a float a quarter of the thickness to I see, don't know. To see <laughs> on a pole? Is it us? I think with the with the waggler, obviously, you, it's almost like a delayed reaction. Isn't it? The fish has gobbed the bait; it's swimming off. You see it. Whereas, obviously, with the pole, we're trying to be so precise and see the bite as soon as a fish looks at it. You know, sometimes I feel like we're too precise with it. Like that pace thing sometimes proves it. Like, obviously, I fish like over depth and let the fish take the bait and delay my strike and everything. And I guess yeah, when you're kind we of getting that with a waggler, aren't you? When we went that pace and it was like, well, I'm like, I need to strike at that, I need to strike at that. You're like, no, because that's not actually a bite. And you're probably not seeing all them indications on that thick waggler. But when you do see it go under, that is the bite. Mm. Yeah. But by the same respect, you can't argue with the results that the anglers get who do fish those fine floats and stuff. So. Oh, no, no, I think there's a time and a place for everything. But all I keep hearing is... It, People can't see see it. They want a thick flock so they can see it. Yeah. Well, when I went into tackle shop to buy some wagglers the other day, I was like, nope, can't see that, can't see that, can't see that. Brilliant. Do you know, I was just about to say to you, this, they've switched you, off these fish because it's not towing. And you got one. Yeah. <laughs> just as I were pursing my lips to say it, my tip went round. <laughs> Because the toe is certainly, certainly dropped. Definitely. I and that one's come off, though. Never. Yeah, yeah. It's changed, hasn't it? It has changed, and I think that's the toe. Which is interesting. I can't believe you've lost me one. No, we've lost... Um, I've lost two, and they've both been on camera. I was thinking about that. Obviously, just thinking then about that, playing that barbell, like when my rod went down, I was almost like, when my rod went, because I've obviously spent 20 odd sessions without one, or without even an indication or anything to tell me what it would be like to hook one. When it went over, I was like, almost like in disbelief. <laughs> and I like picked it up and I remember saying to myself, I've got one, I've actually got one. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, because you're not fishing for uh, 20 bites when you go on a session like that, I'm are you? Not, you know, I'm not, it's not like I'm... Uh, could be another six months before I hook another one. <laughs> Brilliant. You don't, want, you don't want to lose it, do you? No. <laughs> but in the same respect, you've got a river that's full of weed and snags, so you're like, well, I've got to play it Firmly, shall we say. Well, you can't have light tackle on, can you? Let's be fair. Float is up and down like you wouldn't believe. I'm going to change my shot in me. Are you going to get one in this time? Oh, useless. 
what we had, seven, three or four big ones, a load of little ones, and lost two. Lovely bite as well, you know, off it we're going with rod. Can't fail. But that is a thing, in my mind, about when it's, when you've got a venue like this and it's towing, mm. because obviously it's only shallow this place. I mean, what you've got on there, four foot? Yeah. Four foot. Um, shallow venue like this, it's quite open, we're, we're in flat, flat lands here. Always windy. You know, up in hills or back in town, you probably won't feel any wind, but you get a five mile an hour wind here and you get a ripple. I mean, waves were coming over the top of the bank yesterday, so it was sort of 12, 12 mile an hour winds. And if you get like a northerly, which is sort of that way, and it's blowing down lake, it creates that undertow, and your tip, my tip early, were probably bent nearly twice as much as what it is now and they were all good bites and all, I didn't lose one and that toe has definitely dropped off and we've lost two out of the last three and I'm convinced it's how they feed not quite as aggressive and they're just pecking at it yeah even like on this waggler they're not as even those little fish aren't as confident now. No. No. Might be worth changing length of me uh, up length, you know. I think that makes a big difference sometimes. Doing what, sorry? Change, changing the length of my hook length. Yeah. So at the minute, I've got like a five inch hook length. And I'm convinced sometimes when you've got fish that are skimmers and bream, that is, um, carp are different. I mean, I wouldn't even have a five inch hook length on if I were fishing with carp, it'd be three or four inches. But I've got a longer hook length on, and I think when they pick it up, the way they pick it up and then they sort of dip down and pick back up, you need that bit of slack yeah. so that they can sort of swallow it and you get a better hook hold. So it might be worth just increasing it slightly if they're being a bit finicky and now they're feeding. Gonna ball it again, Mick. You put some more bait in, Joe. Why well, wouldn't I? Mind you, with the amount of bites you've had, there's probably enough fish there to have cleaned it all up. Yeah, and that, with the wind being bad, obviously I can't really lose feed. And I could maybe fire out like small balls regularly, perhaps, but I feel like it's just nice to throw great big balls of ground bait in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and that was traditionally always the way to catch bream, weren't it? But big bed of ground bait and they come grazing over it but I'm not sure if that this venue's like that you know with it being so shallow I don't think that like big bed of bait is that um, effective although you might prove me wrong and hopefully you will but oh look at him oh a bit of a bit of a break off that one that's for another one in for good luck I know beauty about that is that uh, it's broke up, they won't even know it's landed. Well, it's definitely getting eaten with all these roach, isn't it? Millions of fish. That's for sure. But I'm not sure if you're actually attracting more fish like that or whether the intention, which is obviously to put an amount of bait in to attract bigger fish. Oh, no, that's that's not working, is it, today? I don't know. You were brilliant earlier. I just imagined them all stacked up and, and like, a, like a big pile of oranges on a fruit and veg stall. However, that's more like it's been run over by a truck in one of them films with the <laughs> mount, you know, when the mount no, I was, pavement. I was, that, I was happy with my accuracy then, that went bad. I was all right with that. Well, we, we all, I, maybe it floated drifted when I were looking. I were, I'm getting the side on angle. It weren't bad. So, obviously you've had, well, the load to be fair on that today. Oh, it's been, it's been incredible. What's been your best upbait colour? Well, pink. I picked a pink one out at the start. <laughs> and you still on the pink now? And I caught a fish, um, I think on my second cast. So, I, well, I kept him on because he didn't come off. And uh, I've kept on that all day. And it's funny, I think you do that, don't you, as an angler? You, 
you pick out the one that you think is that you fancy. Do you know, I've just chucked that one in there and about 50 little fry have tried to attack it. Um, it's so true that, you know, because when I go bass fishing, every bass I've ever caught has been on a white low, and I, so I don't even try a different colour. No, it's the first one you get out of your box when yeah, you go down. Yeah, I don't have any others. Yeah. And I like a pink. Left. I like a yellow one. If it's like a place where I go with this corn, or the corn fishing, I'll put yellow one on and don't ask, you know, because do I actually feed corn and then chuck a wafter over the top of it? No, never. But if I think that it's a venue where people catch on corn on a pole, I'll put yellow one on. But I think the only time I would say that I have an opinion is the more coloured the water, the brighter the yeah. wafter. Um, and we could talk all day about that because I'm not always convinced that they actually are picking out a colour um, over just the fact that they're overing up all the pellets around your method and wherever, whatever colour it were, I think if it were a trans, if it were a clear piece of glass bead, I think you'd still look the fish. Yeah. Um, now obviously there's some underwater footage that some of our friends have produced and it's like you can see that oh this were better and that were better. But what you've got to remember is you can only film underwater when it's like tap water, like drinking water, when it's clear. Yeah. You can't film underwater yeah, when it's, when it's like, like this. this. So nobody actually knows the answer to that in coloured water. That is a fact. That is a fact, yeah. Um, but if it's more coloured, I still want to put a bright one on. And if it's clear, I'd like to use a more like wash, washed out type one. Yeah, a bit paler. A bit paler, um, less offensive. Would you never put a pellet on? I love putting pellets on. Yeah. Love putting pellets on. And I'm not sure... Do you know, I think it's as much about the, not density, the, buoyant, the buoyancy and I suppose it is density, isn't it? Because there's no wrong with a big, um, big pellet, providing it's not too heavy. Because when they're sucking and blowing and, you know, trying to pick your bait up, I think it's, if it's balanced to the rest of the bait that's around your feed and it goes in, that's great. And I've, you know, I've seen some, uh, oh, look, mate, there's one of them sand barges, look. Oh, there it is. That's a big one, isn't it? That is a big... That Which is might big explain thing. why the levels come up while we... Yeah, of course it has, because they've been opening locks, haven't they? To let that thing through. But, yeah, so you can talk about it all day, but I've had a pink one on, and it's gone round, I think, every chuck bar one. Yep. I think I've come back once. All day we are one. Um, it's quite interesting, though, actually, because some chucks you've had a bite after five minutes or less and other times you've left it in for 20 minutes and then got one haven't you it's yeah and that's the beauty of this method the me the method method is that you feel like you're always fishing whereas if you had like a conventional rig on and you get a little dink or a tap because you do get that when you've got maggot on worms on well you only have to look at the amount of little fish that are in my swim don't you to there's millions of them i've been fishing here recently and your tips like don't 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 like that we're, we're worm on and even if you say, well, I put a big bunch of worms on, the trouble is you don't know what the state of your upbait is because they could have picked it up, swam towards your feed, or dropped it, could all be in a bit of a mess. You know, the, your bait might be over the point of your hook. Whereas when you're air rigging on a method like this, it's the old mousetrap job. It's on that bottom there. Even if a fish has been undisturbed it, because your bait's not on your hook, it's on the hair, and which is then in a band, I always feel that you've always got a, a chance of a fish coming along and picking it up and you get your bite and you could just sit back and wait and ordinarily it'll either drop back or it'll tow around and today they've all been tow rounds. Um, but it's obviously quite a concise way of fishing. You know, you're out, you sit, you get your bite and it's, what is interesting, Joe, and this, this is, goes against, you know, what sometimes I think about fishing for bream, I've not really fed much. Well, that was, that was going to be my next question. I know how important worms can be here. Yeah. And yet you're not feeding any worms and you're catching no. some lovely bream. Yep. And I think you, you, you're picking off, but, you know, you're picking off fish with a little sort of parcel of bait that's packed into your feeder. It's a focus yeah. for that fish to come down on. 
Whereas I think if you were trying to get them to graze, because obviously if you're fishing with a conventional feeder, you've got to have more bait there to encourage them to go around picking up. Whereas when you're fishing like this, you're going, right, here's a pile of bait. If it comes anywhere near that and sucks, sucks your uh, ground bait and pellets in, which is what I've got on, the chances are it's going to suck your up bait in as well. So you don't need to get them to be grazing. I've not filled it in. Just get them to come along, parcel a bait, pick it up, mouse trap job. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's, you know, on, on a tougher day, a method can be brilliant. I think when there's a lot of fish there and they're all feeding, you'd have to supplement method feed, fishing with feeding some, some bait on, as well as in a separate feeder. Yeah, like, I've always noticed like with the bream thing for method feeder, like spring and autumn is great, isn't it? Yeah. For it. And winter even. Yes. Yeah, but in summer when there's skimmers and other fish feeding and there's a sh big shoal of bream, I don't think you could feed enough with a method to be able to hold them fish. But Southfield isn't a big deep bream water. It's a quite a shallow, no, it's very shallow venue. Yeah, because despite its size, it's not deep at all, is it? No, so you, you're you never going to hold a big shoal of bream in four foot of water, because every time you up one, surely they're going to be disturbed, which, you know, sometimes that's why you probably have to wait for a bite. So, although it's not the way that I like to fish here at Southfield, and it's not the way that the matches are fished here, I think on a, a nice pleasure day, you want to come here and fish like that, it's dead relaxing, you can chuck out and try and keep it accurate, and you'll uh, you'll have a great day's fishing. It's working a charm, isn't it, today? It's perfect. But not as busy as what you are. <laughs> not as busy, but um, I mean, this is this is lovely. I mean, it'd be nice if the fish were a bit bigger, and maybe if I'd have... keep thinking back in my mind, thinking I should have bought some even tears, maybe because there's some ro better roach among them. Yeah, but you probably can't get they probably can't get to bait, can they? No. Yeah, I, th I actually think to catch some bigger ones, you'd have probably fed it different. Yeah. Which is pretty much what we're saying about this. If I was piling worms in, there'd be lots of little skimmers and roach, whereas by just putting a little bit of bait in, you've just picked them off, haven't you? Like that one. There you go, look at that. that right on cue. Textbook bite. Yeah, so... What was that, like a full-on toe, toe round, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see it pick it up, you get like that bit of a fairly strong jab, four inches, and then obviously it feels it and just carries on swimming and pulls your rod in. It's amazing. So effective, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, effective is the word, I think. It is though, isn't it? Like yeah. you just chuck it yeah. out and catch a fish. Yeah, because like you said earlier, Chances are I'm not actually going to wind in unless it's there's one on, and we've proved that by sitting there sometimes for 20 minutes, and it's still gone round. And he's absolutely perfectly hooked, bottom lip. Another fantastic Southfield bream. Thanks for coming. Another fantastic Southfield blade. That's a little skimmer, that one, mate. Future's looking good for skimmers in here. Oh, canal's full of them, isn't it? Hey? Chuck this on that. Oh, you'll get one on that. Eh? Hey? Probably get one, wouldn't you? I reckon you will. Chuck it in, chuck it in, chuck it in. You chuck that out. Hold oh, no, on, I've got to fill it up. I've got to load him up. Load him up. Catch the bream. Catch us a bream. It's been incredible, hasn't it? Amazing, really.
Come on, let's have a tip between pegs. Yeah, you'd get bites out on it, wouldn't you? Maybe you chucked it. Yeah, I think you would do. Thanks for fishing. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy, happy, happy Friday. <laughs> Weird, you know when you so used to casting over a certain shoulder. Yeah. Cast over your right hand shoulder. Oh no, yeah, yeah, and it's gone to the left because you're off your right shoulder, aren't you? Even, even I'm impressed with that. The paint off me float. I think I've got you, haven't I? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, nice and slow, and then it'll. We're not getting more accurate than that, no. are you? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Just there. Just there, will do. <laughs> So you're going in, you, you, you try and see if there's any bream in the swim by chucking the method over the top. Yeah. Why won't they? Well, because you've thrown all that bait in, well, but some bream, you? you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? As well as all these ropes that were feeding like mad. Well, it's been so effective. I mean, I know I'm fishing further out. Yeah, they'd be there though, wouldn't they? Be on that. That sort of distance. You I would have thought, thought so. I couldn't help myself. I had to come and have a shot on it. We'll probably get rattled off actually. You'd be surprised what'll pick a. I just remember Phil Ringer did a underwater bream DVD video years and years and years ago in Holland and it was like waiting for the breed to turn. This shoulder roach came in, in their thousands, and they just demolished everything on the bottom and the tips were just like... It's out there, yeah. And then they're gone. And it yeah. was like, you wouldn't have even known they'd been through and eaten all the bait. But there was never not a few seconds where roach ain't got the wafter in his mouth, you know. Oh, boy, there's, you know a lot, there's a lot of great underwater footage. You see a lot on Instagram and uh, you know, these short clips abroad and mm. massive shoals of small fish. Like you said, over and up, great piles of corn and maize and hard baits, and it's just, they're, ra they're like ravenous, aren't they? Yeah. What do you think you catch as a fraction of, as a percentage of what's in your swim? Oh, I dread to think. I even think about that. You know, you go on the river and stuff, and you're fishing for an odd bonus fish. Like, is there? Oh, there's got to be a few there. There's got there? to be more than one. I think it's funny. I think the bigger the fish, the less of them. You're catching more, more of a percentage of them. But when, if you were fishing for, if you caught 30 skimmers in a day, there's probably 300 there, isn't there? Yeah, we'd like to think so. I remember because like last year. There was an um, explosion of these little tiny fish, but they were like little blades, weren't they? But they're actually not that bad little fish. I know, they'll be very good soon. It's good, it means the system's alive, isn't it? I just can't wait for that just to go. Mm -hmm. Hardest part with this wag though is actually getting your float to get to the bottom, you know, get your set up to the bottom and get a proper under every bite to hold up. And I know it got me shot bolt down. To fish for hold ups a little bit, but there's so many fish. I mean, look, <laughs> you know, because you we talked earlier about the old techniques that have kind of been forgotten, mm. they wouldn't have thought anything of having a float on twice as big, yep, with 
as much shot down mm. as what you've got round floor. Yeah. Because that's how they had to create that sort of positive rig. Or even to pick up floor sometimes or nail it and yeah. so you could different floats to do different things. I remember chatting to John Illingworth in the pub like after matches and telling me about the days on the Welland and stuff like that. Yeah. Which were great big long wagglers like that just to help yeah, to co present and com combat the tour. Yeah. 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 That's the sort of fishing that I were it's gone, isn't it? when I were young, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's yeah. like little baby skin. Well, it's, it's a little skimmer, look. It is, yeah, yeah. Yes, but the, the canals, sorry, the system's really healthy. Well, I'm not. I've had to buy every single cast without playing. <laughs> so there must be a cat, right? Oh, Thousands of them out there. Abundance. The last repeat, I'll tell you what it's done. Brought, brought a million more, more in. <laughs> More. The swarm has got bigger, not small, not. Drawing them in. Lovely fishing a waggler though, isn't it? On a big lake. Isn't it nice? I think it's the, it's the ultimate, epitome yeah. of fishing, isn't it? That's, you're watching the float, you're casting. Combating the conditions. Well, it's been an interesting day, Joe. I'll have to say that, but I think I'm going to go and uh, catch myself a few <laughs> more, Breen. And then on my uh, big fish swim. Don't you want to? Don't you want to try the Normark? I think you feel like you've got to have a go with the Normark. I should really to appreciate it. the beauty. Because it is a sublime bit of kit when you actually use it. It's stunning. Yeah. It means a lot to me this rod, which is nice, isn't it? Worth looking after. How yeah. old is it? Oh God. Well, they came out in I think '91 or '92, I think. And Stu and Martin Dodsworth, who were in the Nairsburg Club, both bought them. Martin had an Avenger and Stuart had a Titan. So, it wouldn't surprise me if it was 30 years old, this rod. It'd certainly yeah, be. Yeah, it's got to be. I hope. No. The up with it, you've got one, haven't you? Well, you just said it had gone a bit quiet, didn't you? That last chuck, you'd, it had settled. I hope. Incredible. Is that, in the, is that in the mouth? I don't know. <laughs> Jerry's out, mate. <laughs> at the moment. Well, yeah, that's because that's I thought method in it. Do you know what that's because I was, I was telling a nice story about the rod, wasn't it? Yep, yep. Talked to him on. Yeah, so I reckon if it's not 30 years old, it'll be 28 years old. Because they had it when I were a kid. Yeah. And I'm 37 now, so. Oh, you don't look a day of it. No, I'm very, very baby face. Look at that on the wag. It's oh, he's in the mouth. Mate, that Here was on the go. that was on the scrattiest piece of worm you can ever imagine. Scrattiest, that must be a Nairsborough word that. Oh, oh, I can still see him. A jaw. <laughs> can you believe it? Well, I've seen I tell you what, I've seen some angling. I've one job. I've seen some angling in my time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can't do a foot block. <laughs> That, that's enough for me. I'm off to go and fish my peg. It's embarrassing. Oh, can you believe it? Come off and even it just hung there, didn't it? <sighs> that were under the chin, that. Well, wasn't it? it worked quite right, wasn't no, it? No, it were under the chin. I could see it. You got another bream, mate? Another one, Joe. I tell you what, they've... They've actually come in force. Been good, hasn't it? Considering how cold it were this morning and the fact that we actually thought it was going to be one of the really cold, horrible, choppy days, it's turned out to be a great day and it just goes to show you that when you come pleasure fishing, I think you've got a bit more water to yourself. The fishing can be incredible and it's nice actually not to uh, fish in a match and just have a good day chatting with my pal. And in this case, look, catching these I mean, look at that. Yeah, another one. Cracking. We've probably had a net full of fish. I don't know what sort of weight, but just a great day's fishing, and it's been good to chat with you and catch up with everybody, and hopefully we won't leave it as long next time to uh, get together and have a chat and have a fish. We just want to thank everybody for obviously watching and subscribing and liking all our videos, don't we? And Certainly do. Every now and again, it's just good to sit there and... Touch base. And Yeah, exactly, so... Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.